the bottom on the floor here, I've got a little uh, heater, a little 1,000 watt heater with a little fan in it. And on the wall here, I've got a thermometer that shows about 115 degrees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cap the bottom of this off. There it is capped off. And I now have a, kind of a model of a building that has 115 degree air in it. And on my gauge over here, I'm going to put it on pressure, pressure. So I've got this red tube here goes up to the top and the green tube goes right down to the bottom. So uh, you can't see this, but it's, it's too small. But I was thinking this would be something that you could build for yourself just to get a feeling about stack pressure and how it works. So right now I have a positive stack of one pascal at the top and a negative stack of minus 0.3 at the bottom. So if I was to open up one of the holes at the bottom, I'm going to change the pressure balance inside the tube, and you can see that right away. When I open up one of these holes here, we'll have each hole there, I've opened it up, and now I have a one pascal pressure at the top and a zero pascal pressure at the bottom. So all the pressure is going up to the top. If I do the reverse and I close that one off, and I open one up here, just like that, the whole thing flips around, and I now get a 0.1 pascal pressure at the top and a minus 1 pascal pressure at the bottom. So this is a nice little demonstration as to how stack works. And one of the things that I do sometimes, if it's in still conditions, and I notice the stack on the building is really, really high at the top or high at the bottom, it actually tells me very inexpensively and very quickly how the building is leaking. So if there's a lot of leaks at the bottom, all the pressure would be at the top and, and vice versa. So what's involved here, if you want to build one, this is a piece of four inch PVC drain pipe. I think it was $10. At the top, I've got a 90. So that I've got a little cap that I can take off. And at the bottom, I guess you can barely see this. I have a T and I have an ABS cap that just happens to fit on the end of the T. So what this enables me to do is to take my heater here and stick this little metal boot in this hole and I can run the heater and heat up. I can heat up the stack basically. So I can run heat in there. When I open up the hole at the top, it allows heat to go through the tube, otherwise it just sits there and doesn't go anywhere. So there's all kinds of things you can do with this rig. You can try hanging a bag of ice or dry ice in there, uh, although you have to be careful because CO2 is actually heavier than air. It'll create its own stack. But just cooling off the air with something like that, this, if the dry ice was in a bag, you can get the effect of negative stack. And you can also take pressure measurements all the way up and down the tube here and find out where on this tube the neutral pressure plane exists. So uh, it's my contention that people learn by doing and they learn by seeing. So uh, this is a way that you can learn a lot about stack uh, and have some fun with it as well. So if, if you need more details on that, I could put together like a little materials list. But basically I went down to Home Depot and was able to pick all this stuff up on Sunday afternoon, throw it together. And after the first attempt, it worked. I actually started out initially with a light bulb in the bottom. And the idea was that the light bulb would create enough heat. But what it does is actually creates a nice effect, kind of lights it up. Uh, and if you, if you put a tube in there and you dangle a tube down the bottom, you can actually see where the tube is. But the electric light bulb, 60 watts, wasn't enough to heat up the column of air enough to have any kind of effect. I think I was able to get it up at 4 or 5 degrees, but even 4 or 5 degrees, I'm able to see some stack. You can also take your smoke puffer, and you can puff some smoke in the bottom, and you can notice that even with one pascal of stack, that you can get flow through the tube. So you can also see what a one pascal pressure looks like in terms of uh, how much air it draws through a hole. So all in all, for uh, a few hours at, the, at Home Depot, you can learn a lot by building one of these little rigs on your own. So, any questions about that?
If you happen to build one, one of the questions I've always asked myself is, does it really matter where the pickup probes are, like inside the house when you move them up or down? Does it matter if I take this tube and I put it in the, in the building and I drop it down three floors? Is the entry point, is that important? What happens if I have a tube running out of my building and uh, the air in that tube gets really hot when the sun beats on it? Does that actually increase the pressure of my tube? Well, what we've shown here is even at 87 degrees in the tube with 74 degrees in the room, we still have about one Pascal difference between the top and the bottom. So if we had a tube hanging out the window when we were doing a test and that sun was beating on it and the air in the tube went up to say 100 degrees and it hung down say four or five stories, we could get a 10 Pascal pressure in that tube. So it's useful to know that. I've had this happen when I was out testing uh, and I took my, my pressure pickup tubes down the stairwell and I noticed it had this huge pressure in there and I couldn't figure out why I was until I uh, started playing with one of these. I just drilled a quarter inch hole right at the bottom here. I don't think you can see it, but right in the bottom of the bottom of that T, and I just poked it right in there. So I'm using two channels of my gauge, and all of our gauges are color coded. So I'm using the, uh, actually I should really be using a blue tube here, a blue tube and a green tube, but I got the colors mixed up. But I'm using one channel for the top and one channel for the bottom. So I'm looking at the two top and bottom separate. If I was to have them both on the same channel, I'd just be looking at the total and I wouldn't be seeing how the top and the bottom varied.